And this is New Angel Tarot. It's been a couple of weeks, guys. So sorry. I have been so busy. Like, it's been crazy. Um, studying, teaching, reading, traveling, expos, new business ventures. It's just Angel been... Tarot. Go, go, go. Better turn myself off on the laptop there, otherwise we're going to get a bit of feedback. So how are we all? I'm so glad that you're here. We'll give everyone a few minutes to turn up because I know we also have regulars here. Hi, Anna. How are you going? Good to see you. We've got the sun that came out straight away. That's a beautiful start. Spirit's already talking to us. We've got some good vibes in the room. This is what we like to see. So before we get started on the donation-based uh, readings, just remember, guys, I don't give free readings. I'm not a free channel. I, I, this is just not how I work. Energy in, energy out. You give me something, I give you something. I think that's fair. Um, before we get started, I just want to mention, if you haven't already, check out my website, newangeltarot.com. You can book a personal reading with me if this sort of forum isn't for you. You can also uh, learn all about tarot with me uh, at my school. I've got an academy, New Angel Tarot Academy. Go and check that out as well. The links are in the description below. And you can learn online at your own pace, do your own thing. And all you need to do is just check in with the crowd, check in with the rest of the students. There's quite a few of us now. We're growing every day. Um, and just say hi. Um, you can learn at your own pace. As I said, it's an online forum. Um, if you are a student oh, a student, and you're wanting um, maybe a concession or a discount, I'm happy to accommodate those as well. Just send me an email and let me know your circumstances. And I want to be obviously be able to make things accessible for everybody and affordable for everybody. So please don't be a stranger if you're worried about money and things like that as well. So I'm happy to assist those in need. What else? Before we get started on the actual readings again, I really wanted to do, I'm going to do a separate video on this anyway, but because I've been a bit time poor, I wanted to do a separate reading on um, what's happening with Harry and Meghan at the moment. Um, obviously this week we had the full moon eclipse, which was huge. Um, the last eclipse that we're going to see until 2025. So it was a big one. Um, lot, there were lots of ceremonies going around, but it was a full moon eclipse in Taurus. Now, Queen Elizabeth uh, II was a Taurus, and I feel like it was a bit of an homage to her. You know, it was the last kind of last hurrah to sort of her face in the sky, you know, her energy in the sky. Um, and also yesterday, I think it was yesterday or the day before, two days ago, uh, the Netflix series The Crown, based on the royal family, uh, resurfaced. New episodes, new season, season five. Um, so if you haven't started watching that, you can binge all the whole season. They've given us everything up front. They're not drip feeding anything, which is fantastic. Um, and it's quite interesting because it starts talking about Dodie, um, his father, and how uh, obviously it's going to progress into how him and Diana got together and um, but also the discrepant or the, what do you call it? The, uh, the uh, relationship between uh, Prince Charles and Camilla and the demise of um, Diana and Philip's wedding relationship, marriage. Um, so, you know, it's very interesting as to his popularity back then before he was king 30 years ago and how he's managing to maybe turn the tables now. He has the opportunity uh, once the coronation is official and he, you know, I mean, he's officially the king now. I mean, there's been people sort of commenting saying, but he's already the king. We don't need a coronation for that. But still, essentially, if you want to be traditional, when the coronation happens, it's in my book official. Um, and I think he's waiting for that moment to actually voice some new things, um, you know, make some new rules. And that will affect uh, Harry and Meghan as well. Harry's got the book coming out, Spare, which has already been um, announced, and that will be released in January, um, even though there's been talks as well about the separation of Harry and Meghan also, based on the fact that Megan just keeps needling him and asking him to do things, which I think she's had her fill. 
um, and Harry is finally starting to see the cracks. Excuse me, just having a sip of my morning brew, my witch's brew. Um, so, you guys, we've got six people watching. If you are watching, please say hi in the chat. Let me know where you're calling in from, what your name is. Um, don't be creepy and just sort of sit there. <laughs> That is um, one of the things about YouTube. You know, you never really know who's watching, but at the end of the day, whatevs. If you're here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, again, please say hi in the chat. And if you're new here, um, thanks for stopping by and listening to me uh, waffle on for a few minutes. So we have been running now for five minutes. I've been online. I'm going to do a quick read, as I said, on um, Harry and Meghan. And I just want to find out what's going on here because I did, again, do a previous video. Um, and I'm going to sort of maybe put that at the end of this video even, uh, which is a link to where does Harry's loyalty lie? And look, there are children involved in this marriage as well. So, you know, it's not a laughing matter um, and no one's wishing for anyone to get divorced but at the end of the day um, I think Harry knows that you know he will always have despite what his behavior I mean look his behavior is nowhere near as bad as his father's um, with the carry-on that's happened in the years and the decades that um, were before him so really he's probably thinking well you know Who's worse, you know, me or my father, me or anybody else who's done um, terrible things um, in the royal family? You know, there was a question around Andrew for a while there about, you know, his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop waffling. Uh, while I'm doing this reading as well, guys, if you would like a personal reading today, here and now, uh, while we're live, please use the super sticker in the chat below. Um, there's no minimum donation, but, you know, $5 and above would be appreciated. Um, thank you, Anna. And I will get started um, on that. Anna, before we get started on your reading, thank you so much for your donation. Please provide insight on Doug. We like each other and have a good match. Stresses, miscommunication and hurt feelings caused me to lash out. Anna, what is your zodiac sign and what is Doug's zodiac sign? If you can also leave that information for me, that's also going to enrich your reading. And we can all have a bit of fun and find out what's going on with this situation. But again, before I get started, I did promise people who are tuning in now to do a quick read on um, Harry and Meghan. So we're just going to have a look at that first and then I will do... You're reading, Anna, so just hang in there. Okay, guys, let's get started. Angel Spirits Guides, Angel Spirits Guides. What's happening with Harry and Meghan right now? What's happening with Harry and Meghan right now? Is there a separation? Is he starting to see the light? What messages do you have for me today, Spirit, on Harry and Meghan? What's going on here? Okay. Two of Cups, card of uh, marriage and the lovers. This is an interesting start. <clears throat> the Prince of Pentacles. Um, this is Earth energy. Uh, this is actually Virgo energy. This is actually Prince Harry, believe it or not. This is the Prince card of uh, the courts. Uh, and Harry uh, is a Virgo. You cannot make this stuff up. In the center of the reading, we've got the Ten of Swords. Oof. Okay, everything is coming to a peak, especially his mental health. Um, I found it interesting this week as well that Catherine actually, um, yeah, I mean, yes, it was mental health week or, no, sorry, not mental health week, um, addiction week. Um, and the fact that Harry has mentioned in the past, you know, his um, issues with his mental health, but also he liked to dabble, you know, the gateway drug you know, marijuana and da-da-da, you know, back in the day he loved to party and that was kind of um, how they used to sort of enjoy themselves. But I'm sure things have changed since he's had children. But I feel here in the centre we've got ten of swords here. This is ruin. This is, um, you know, toxicity reaching a peak. Let's have a look what's coming up. Wow, five of cups, disappointment, sorrow, loss in pleasure. It's not looking good. Wow. 
the tower. Okay, this is for me always the card of divorce in the tarot. So, who said this was a live reading? Um, I feel like this is going to be entitled Leaning into the Royal Family. I'm going to look at the bottom of the deck now. Six of Cups, Pleasure. This is also a card of nostalgia. I feel as well, um, I was going to say this before I started the reading as well, that Harry is reminiscing. Harry is thinking of the past. Harry is, you know, reflecting on his family, um, you know, the, the the pleasures that he used to have, the, the um, you know, the privileges that he used to have. And I think he's remembering that now. It's all coming back. This is really interesting. Uh, I'm going to circle in now to the centre of the reading and have a look at uh, what's happening in the Ten of Swords. Okay, let's start. Eight of Pentacles. This is the card of Double Virgo, first and second decan. He's having to focus here on a skill. He's having to focus here on possibly mastering something here when it comes to his career, when it comes to his abilities to generate uh, an income for himself, <clears throat> etc. So let's have a look at that first. I'm going to pull 10 cards here or nine extra cards because this is my, what I'm calling my tree of life, uh, middle pillar kind of uh, <laughs> spread. <clears throat> I developed this myself, so I'm kind of loving it right now. Then we also have 10 of pentacles here, which is all about legacy, family, inheritance. Uh, you know, again, I'm going to, I'm going to circle back on that word legacy um, because it is about legacy. It is about the uh, tradition within the family. <clears throat> But, you know, when all's said and done, I don't even think Megan would blink an eye if she did become divorced <clears throat> because she would obviously receive lots of money and still afford uh, an amazing lifestyle and she would pretty much cash in and get what she wanted, um, what she was intending on all along. Material gain here, financial independence. Okay, we've got eight, nine and ten together, which is very interesting. Queen of Pentacles here, this is the card of the Queen. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, financial independence, but also uh, the card of Taurus. And I talked about the full moon in Taurus and the queen making an appearance again. She is watching. She is waiting. She is probably hoping that uh, Harry will see the light and um, move on. But, you know, the queen, the queen holds marriage um, in the highest regard. Uh, and that was also very evident in the last... Um, you know, the last episode of The Crown that we watched last night, and I think we're up to episode five, um, when her and, um, you know, the princess, uh, Prince of Edinburgh, um, you know, we're talking about their marriage. But anyway, um, number six, we've got The Magician, which is also the card of uh, Virgo and Gemini. So this is Harry manifesting what he wants next. Um, I think he's definitely manifesting something here. Strife, okay, petty arguments. He said, she said energy, okay. This is not good. This is um, conflict and also indicates change, okay, on our way out, on our way to uh, solving issues that Leo energy here with, um, you know, it, it, it's very heated, okay? There's a lot of heated energy here. Seven, we've got number eight here, Prince of Wands, taking action, Sagittarian energy. I feel he's going to um, definitely leave her. I said this months ago and people are still going, no, but it's still, you know, <clears throat> there's a caveat now with the book coming out that if there's anything that happens, there's a bit of a post-nup agreement um, if anyone is damaged as a result of what's information is going to be released in the book. Three of Cups here is a celebration. I feel that the, the world will be rejoicing uh, when he does make this decision to uh, move on. Okay, last card, the root of the reading. Six of Wands, victory. Okay, this is a victory for, ha for Harry if he does decide to move on um, after this loss of pleasure and the divorce card. Overarching energy is that Six of uh, Cups, which is pleasure, but also the card of nostalgia. I'm going to clarify that at the bottom of the deck with the King of Pentacles. So we're talking King energy. We're also talking Capricorn energy. We're talking long-term financial investment, long-term standing, um, long-term uh, legacy. Um, I feel, Harry, if he does <clears throat> turn a corner, and when, you know, the book comes out and he manages to uh, 
reveal certain things. Because also the other thing I mentioned in uh, the reading about Harry and Meghan when I did who's, Where Does His Loyalty Lie, that is the title of the video that I previously released, that there were uh, – the moon came out and there were hidden secrets, hidden things that had never been released before. And we're going to get bombshells in the book for sure. The book, if you don't already know, you've been um, unaware of this, it's called Spare. And um, I was making jokes with my husband all week about <laughs> can you spare a square <laughs> from Seinfeld, if you know that episode, it's quite funny. If I put that sort of – if I put that in the video, I'm sure it would get a copyright strike or something, so I'm not going to put that there, but that's just a side joke. Can you spare a square? No, I can't. I can't spare a square. But, yeah, look, um, so basically uh, I'm going to dovetail uh, this reading as part of the live session today because we've only got uh, one donation so far, guys. So, look, I'll stay online as long as people are interested. <clears throat> and if you would like a personal reading, don't forget to hit that super sticker in the chat below. <clears throat> and I will give you a personal reading here on YouTube. However, this is my uh, dovetailing in the um, the prediction for Meghan and Harry. Uh, Meghan and Harry's, uh, you know, current energies and what's actually happening. So my prediction is, yeah, they will get divorced. I'm, I'm totally convinced. I don't think this is ever going to go the distance, and I really don't think that it's – and they have a future. I think Harry will always know that he's a royal and he will always have that blood. Um, and Her and Meghan is just there for the ride, you know. She's there for the joy ride. Um, so, yeah, so, guys, uh, if you like this uh, reading, let me know in the chat and also what you think about the royal family. Um, leave a comment. And um, if you've just joined us, thank you so much for joining me. I've just done a quick introduction to the um, session today with my views on uh, Prince Harry and Meghan. Now we're going to get started into why we're all here, the live readings, uh, what's happening in other people's lives, the everyday person. Juliana has joined us. Thank you, Juliana, for your beautiful reading uh, donation. Uh, thank you so much, Anna, for waiting. Um I'm about to start now. Miss Priscilla's here as well. Hi, Priscilla. How are you? Great to see you. Thanks for your patience, everyone. We'll start the readings now with Anna. Please provide insight on Doug. We like each other and are a good match. Stresses, miscommunication, hurt feelings and cause me to lash out. Sincerely, I apologised. He wants to think about things, which I respect. Praying our attachment. Our attraction <clears throat> is strong enough and he's willing to forgive and move forward with the connection. Anna is a Gemini and Doug is a Pisces. Now, um, we'll do Anna's reading. Um, however, Anna, I am also a Gemini, my love. And I've also in the past dated a Piscean. They are very sensitive. They are very emotional. They take things, you know, quite quite harshly. But at the end of the day, the Gemini and the Pisces are a dual sign. They both um, have a double uh, a symbol. So the Gemini is the sign of the twins and the Pisces is the two fish. So they are the only two signs which meet that are a dual sign. You have a double uh, symbolism there, which means... You know, you'll always sort of find a, a sort of a balance there. You'll always sort of find some sort of um, middle ground uh, eventually. Um, but it's interesting because you can always see also both sides of the story um, and, you know, hopefully find your way back together, which is what we all want. <clears throat> I'm just going to move this uh, incense as well, guys, because it's sort of blocking my throat a little bit and it's making my voice croaky. So just give me a sec. I'll just move this out of the way. <clears throat> I 
All right, that's a bit better. That was really getting in my throat. So we're going to do a reading for Anna, Anna and Doug. Let's get started. All right, let's get started and see what's happening with Anna and Doug. Angel Spirits Guides, Angel Spirits Guides. What can you tell me about Anna and Doug? What's going on with Anna and Doug? Gemini and Pisces energy. Gemini's, Gemini and Pisces energy. What's going on with Anna and Doug? Thank you so much, Spirit. There we go. Three of Pentacles. Okay, so this is about teamwork, collaboration, working together, but it also can indicate real estate. Ten of Pentacles here as well. They can also indicate family, legacy, wanting to create something for the future here. The Lover's Card. Here we go. So this is where it starts to get interesting. This is your card, Anna. You're coming up in the center of your reading here, which is the card of Gemini. In the future, oh, nice. You've got two of cups. This is looking good, Anna. And then you've got the Ace of Swords. This is about truth, integrity, uh, a new beginning, <clears throat> clarity with mental health. Bottom of the deck, you have the King of Pentacles. I feel um, both of you are just learning something new about each other, and I feel like there's a there's an energy here of um, you know redemption. I feel like he's gonna he's gonna come back here and look at something here that um, you know it, I don't think it's over. Okay, but let's have a look at the middle pillar here, the Lovers card, and see uh, what else is coming through <clears throat> as in the so entire storyline but if you look at the king of pentacles it's about stability and and staying grounded you know capricorn energy is grounding energy right so this is also picking up on current energies okay so current energies will flow into the root of the reading um so Lover's card, then we have the Three of Swords, okay? So at the moment, there's some heartbreak and sorrow happening. There can also be some healing, all right? Um, three of Swords is always about healing. Um, and when people are healing from previous relationships as well or some sort of conflict, um, you know, they might take a step back. They might not be ready for, um, you know, a relationship just yet. But there's still some sorrow here in the in the heart of the reading straight after that. I don't know if you're still obviously going through some pain, Anna, because if this is coming straight after your card here as well, this is like a choice that needs to be made. This is a choice about, you know, you choosing to stay um, in an energy of um, the past or move forward with um, and not reacting. But look, it's interesting because when I started dating my husband, I had come out of a lot of pain as well. And when we come out of a lot of pain, we essentially are still purging. We're still working through that scar tissue from, you know, where we've been hurt in the past. And unfortunately, sometimes as well, especially with the Gemini, we can take it out on other people. We can project our shit on a new potential, okay? And if the other person is in tune with you and this is the person for you on the right path, they'll line up with that. They'll become in sync with that. They'll understand that that's not, it's not about them, okay? It's coming from you. It's not actually about um, any of those things. You know, again, you're healing. You're coming out of something here that, you know, you, you may have projected and you've apologized. So that's okay. Three of cups here, you know, three, three, you're going through three of swords to three of cups. This is a recovery. Okay. This is beautiful. So I feel like three threes here. This is beautiful. It's like um, three threes are um, higher consciousness. Um, so I feel like this Piscean energy here as well is definitely um, understanding where you're coming from. Four of Oh, well, the fourth card is the Queen of Pentacles. This is Taurus energy. Um, this is you kind of also being very abundant as um, a mother, as someone here who's very generous. The Magician is also Gemini energy as well, uh, Gemini and Virgo. So I feel like if you really want to redeem yourself here and you really do want to patch things up, you know, just manifest it. Just sort of imagine this person, you know, Doug, coming back to you and saying, listen, I understand, I have clarity here. Because in your future here, you've got the Two of Cups and you've got the Ace of Swords. So I feel like with truth and integrity and, you know, clarity in your communication, you're going to be able to share that with him on a telepathic level, like on a psychic level, as well as coming from the heart space, which is really important. 
Sixth card here, we've got the Prince of Swords, all right? This is your card again, Gemini, uh, in the court cards. So this is about you sort of, again, using your throat chakra. Closed mouths don't get fed. You have to say what you what is on your mind. Um, but be mindful about how you say and what you say. But at the same time, you know, you're on the horse here and you're taking, you're creating a new pathway here. And pathways to, of communication are really important when you're building a new relationship with anybody. You know, let it all out. Just explain, you know, just give me some time. You know, you're still healing from a previous relationship, but you really want this to work. All of those things, you know, because sometimes people aren't mind readers. They need to hear it. They need to know what's on your mind. So just sp talk to him because this is all about communication, okay? Seventh card, we've got the five of... Um, cups here which is about you know understanding your potential look at what you do have not what you don't have okay look at always look at the glass half full there could be a loss of pleasure here um, in terms of your ability to connect with what pleasure actually means and you know how that can bring you joy um, you know that can also be part of the healing part of your you know letting go of the past then we've got the Nine of Swords as well. This is negative self-talk, all right? Again, leaning into the Five of Cups energy about regret, sorrow, disappointment, um, and a healing taking place. You know, if we have negative self-talk, we don't allow grace to come in. You know, it creates a wall. It creates, you know, boundaries around us. Um, you know, spirit are knocking on, your angels are guiding you, but they're knocking on the door, but they can't get in. So if you're speaking in a, in a low vibration, um, that's what happens here. So it's really important that you, um, no more negative self-talk, okay? You are worthy. You are, um, you know, you deserve this two of cups that's, that's waiting for you here. Next card we have is the eight of cups, um, turning your back on things that no longer serve you. And that includes old relationships, old connections, um, emotional stuff that you just go, listen, I've done all that. I've been there. I've done that. I'm not doing this anymore. Okay, and you need to move forward. Uh, final card. Wow, you got the world. So this is a completion for you. This is your ability now to close that previous chapter or previous book in your life. It's not even a chapter. The world card is like massive. The world card is the end of a very, very long cycle, and it's usually a book. It's not a chapter. So your previous marriage and your previous connections and all those sorts of things, which I feel, you know, it's, it's sort of as at the top of your reading here, you've got your own card and at the bottom card here, you've got the world, which is completion. This is full circle moment for you. This is your ability to sort of put put an end to it. And this is you dancing in a wreath of victory, not wearing any clothes here, but also being your authentic self now. You know, you don't have to pretend to be somebody you're not. Be you, you know, warts and all, scars and all, memories and all. Um, and if you're open and you're communicative with your new partner here or Doug, he's going to think about things. Um, we'll see what happens. But the overarching energy here is your king of pentacles, which is about long-term financial security, long-term, um, you know, thinking process here. Nine of wands is clarifying that that's on the bottom of the deck. So they're just, this is an, an energy here where they're saying, listen, don't give up, you know, um, have great strength. Okay, this is about your ability to be passionate, passion in Sagittarian energy, okay, which is your opposite sign. Your opposite sign is, um, you know, Sagittarian energy, which is your ability to seek wonder in the world. Um, you know, look at look at what's around you, look at what the opportunities are and stay strong. You know, this is not a card for you to throw the towel in. This is not a card for you to give up. Okay. Yes, you've been hit over the head with a brick a few times, but spirit saying, look, there's long-term financial security here for you. There's long-term security in a lot of, um, you know, in terms of legacy, in terms of real estate. Um, I don't know as well. Recently, here you may have also come into some money here. I don't know if you got money out of your divorce or something like that. But there was also just recently as well, you may have come into some money with some inheritance. I'm not sure if that's resonating with you. Um, but, you know, look at creating a new future for yourself. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about the future. It's not about the past. Okay, so keep your eye on the prize. Don't, um, again, let go of that negative self-talk. And I'm sure here there's beautiful opportunity waiting for you, two of cups and the ace of swords. So you've got relationship here waiting for you and mental health, a new reset button, clarity in order to move forward. So Anna, I hope you enjoyed your reading today. Um, thank you so much for joining me and, and hitting that super sticker. I really appreciate your patience. Uh, when I started the, uh, the session today as well, we did a little reading. 
about the Royals. If you've just joined me, my name's Renee and this is New Angel Tarot. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a continued subscriber, thanks for coming back. Lorraine's here. Hey, Lorraine, how are you going? Nice to see you again. I'm so glad I caught you live. I've been going through a Kundalini awakening and I've been a hermit for a while now. Starting to feel a bit better, ready for what's coming. Good on you, Lorraine. I need a bit of Kundalini myself. <laughs> Everybody needs a little bit of Kundalini from time to time. Um, I've got the sun here for you as well. It just popped out on top. You always bring such a high vibration, Lorraine. It's great to see you. Thanks for your comment. We're going to move on to the next reading now. We're going to talk to Juliana Anderson. Juliana, where are you calling in from? Are you from America or Australia or the UK? You'd like another reading? It's Pisces, Sun, Moon and Ascendant, Cancer. I'm assuming you just want a general. Is that right, Juliana? you just like a general reading. I haven't seen any other instruction from you. Um, so you are water, water, water. Wow. All right. Let's see what's going on with Juliana today. Thank you for your donation, Juliana. I really appreciate it. I would like a general with spiritual focus. Okay, no problem. No problem at all. If you're watching, please say hi in the chat. I'd really appreciate it. I'd love to know who's watching. Um, let me know where you're calling in from. We are a collective. Just remember, guys, this isn't a game of, uh, you know, cloak and dagger. We are a community. We are a group. We are all watching. We're all experiencing this energy together. Um, so it is important that you at least let yourself be known. Um, I think that's really important. Um, <clears throat> so just just say hi, you know, even if you don't want to say who you are or where you're from, just say hi, you know. It's kind of, I don't know, I think it's kind of good manners as well. Just saying. Um, <clears throat> I hope you're enjoying the video. I hope you're enjoying the live. I hope you're getting something out of this. Straight away here we've got the magician. Okay, so I feel here um, as well, uh, Juliana, you're manifesting something here new uh, on a spiritual level, on a magic level, on an energy level. Um, I'm going to pull you a Celtic cross now. Um, $10 is pretty decent, so let's go there and um, see what's coming up for you as a general and any spiritual messages that might come through. Angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides. What does Juliana need to know? Thank you so much, spirit. What does Juliana need to know today? Thank you so much, Spirit. Thank you so much. Okay, first card out. Beautiful. You've got the Empress here. That's at the center of your reading. It's all about creation, Goddess of Earth, <clears throat> being extremely abundant. Hi, Brindy Art. Brindy Art. Empress is in the center of Juliana's reading. Queen of Wands is in the crowning position. Hanged man is in your foundation. Recent past, you have the nine of wands. Uh, in your immediate future here, you wanted spirituality. You've got the you got the death card here, which is uh, scar of Scorpio. This is coming up for you in the next four to six weeks, uh, Juliana. There's a transformation. We are in Scorpio season right now. We're going to be in Scorpio season for another, you know, another two weeks, or you know, 10 days. Um, we're going to be, yeah, next 10 days, we're still going to be in Scorpio season. Um, but there's transformation occurring here. Ace of Wands, uh, sorry, Ace of Swords is clarity here. Ace of Cups, wow, two aces. And then you have the Six of Swords here, which is in your uh, attitude. Your outcome here is the Four of Pentacles, which is definitely about your financial security, stability, uh, and those sorts of things. Bottom of the deck, we've got the Ten of Pentacles. I also feel here as well, not sure if you've just come into some money, but if you haven't just come into some money, you can also uh, be looking at, um, you know, creating a bit of a legacy here for yourself in terms of partnership. Um, yeah, looking looking to the future, okay? Clarifying the Ten of Pentacles. Wow, you've got the Magician again, okay? So he's coming up again. Magician energy is ruled by Mercury. Uh, it's ruled, 
it's um, Gemini and Virgo energy, but Mercury energy is also about your business. So I'm not sure if you've got a business at the moment, uh, Juliana, but I'm sort of sensing here as well, you're really creating something here that's creative and you're also wanting to be, um, you know, obviously independent, but at the same time, you, you've sort of got everything at your fingertips right now. I feel like you're about to sow some new crops. You're about to definitely... Um, you know, so something, so a new season for yourself. And I feel really strongly as well that you could also be, um, yeah, definitely doing something creative here. In your foundation, you've got your um, Jupiter energy here, which is hanged man energy. Um, and in your crowning position, you've got Leo. Okay. And that's about being in the spotlight. That's about looking at something through a lens. Okay, through a new lens and also being um, super creative, you know, and this is the card of Madonna, you know, Madonna's a Leo. She's always in the spotlight. Um, but at the moment in the middle, you've got this beautiful Empress energy. Empress is the third major arcana. Number three is always about creation, you know, Maiden Mother Crone. Holy Spirit, Son, Father, and the Holy Spirit. It's a Trinity number. So the Trinity numbers are always about creation. Um, it's a fire photography class. Wow. So that Queen of Wands energy is amazing. So that fire energy is in your crowning position. Um, and again, you know, in the foundation here, we've got your hanged man, which is ruled by Pis ruled by Neptune. Uh, and Neptune is your ruling planet. Okay. So this is in your foundation. You are 100% in alignment with what you're doing right now. Okay. Um, it's amazing. Okay. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so this is really beautiful um, and very, very powerful and I think very much in sync with what's going on. Recently, you've gone through a bit of pain. You've gone through a bit of, oh, I don't know if I can do this, but they're saying, you know, you've hung in there. You've actually kicked through. You've actually pushed through. There's an energy here as well of determination, of resilience. Um, so I feel as well here you've you've beautifully, you, you know, you've captured that gorgeously and you know what you're doing and where you're headed. As I said, in your immediate future here, the next four to six weeks in particular, you're going through that transformation. Menopause, yes. Um, you know, preaching to the choir here. I had my first hot flush three months ago or two months ago. So I feel you and it is a whole load of fun, isn't it? Um, but look, hey, hopefully it doesn't last for too long. Um, and you can transition here. But I also feel as well you're letting go of stuff that you used to do and the stuff that you used to do just doesn't serve you anymore. So, you know, you are definitely stepping into your own here and, you know, Scorpio energy as well is super creative. You know, all water signs are creative, but Scorpio energy is probably one of the most creative signs as well. Pisces and Scorpio, you are a sun in Pisces. But when you've got that Scorpio energy waiting for you on the other side, you know, it's it's pretty fantastic. Um, so I feel really strongly here. There's also an energy where you might also, also be doing, um, you know, this fire photography is really interesting as well because that's sort of, you know, the essence of creation. You know, things were created out of, you know, sort of firepower. It's kind of like, you know, we're, re we're talking, you know, the uh, a little bit of Kabbalah here, but also just the fact that, you know, you also know what you're doing. Your focus at the moment, this is in the position of the querent. This is you right now. Um, laser focus. You know, your mental health is pretty much on point. You've got an ability here to heal. You've also been working on that mental health, which is really important. So you've got this ability to sort of have this ultimate clarity, this ultimate sort of new beginning here, which is totally amazing, totally awesome. Um, and, you know, your your energy here, your men mental thought processes here are laser sharp, okay? You are on point, essentially. In your environment and how other people see you, you've got your Ace of Cups. Again, another new beginning here, but this is like the quest for the Holy Grail. This is what you've always been wanting. This is something that you're pushing towards. Um, and you're, you're following this dream. You're following your passions. You're following your cup. Your cup is overflowing. Okay, and this is essentially where you're where you're at right now, and it's amazing. Your attitude is the Six of Swords, um, which again is um, really beautiful energy. This is your attitude. Mental health uh, is is you're in recovery phase, but you've you've nailed it. Okay, and I feel like everything that you've been through up until this point in your life as well is has been a rite of passage. The pain, um, you know, just life experiences, whatever you've gone through. You're on your way now. This is smooth sailing. Okay, this is beautiful energy. This is your ability to kind of just cruise out of um, any kind of conflict, any kind of, um, 
you know, previous um, pain that you've experienced, you, you know, you're smooth sailing now. It's really beautiful. And I also feel like your attitude here, you're wanting to be obviously near water. There's water in your, or all around you, you know, in your future and the fact that you're a triple water sign. But I also feel as well, you have been possibly thinking about um, a trip. I don't know if you've been planning a journey or some sort of holiday or some sort of um, getaway, but that's definitely here as well as above, so below in your new beginning here. I feel like you need to be geographically around water also. Your outcome here is your four of pentacles, which is definitely about your business, definitely about creating financial security for yourself. Um, and definitely, um, you know, building an empire. This is empire energy, okay? And it's really, really beautiful. You're planning a trip to Sweden. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, that's really powerful. 33 years of healing. 33 is also a magical number. As you know, it's a master number. It's Christ consciousness. It's also about, you know, the age of, you know, Jesus was 33 when he died. We have 33 vertebrae in our spine. You know, 33 is a master master Christ consciousness number. So I feel like you're definitely transitioning out of all these things that you've been experiencing and now you're creating this financial security for yourself. Now you're cre now you're building an empire and you're in control. That's that's the beauty of this card as well. You're in control. You're holding on to that. You're ensuring that everything you're doing here is really really strong, very very powerful. It's amazing. Um, your overarching energy is the Ten of Pentacles, which is wealth, abundance, uh, legacy, inheritance. Could also be inheritance that's coming your way. You may not have just seen it. I don't know if you have come into money, but this can also indicate that as well. But essentially speaking, you know, you're building something here for your future. The Ten is excess, you know, in terms of your legacy and what you're doing creatively, uh, Virgo energy as well. This is Virgo, Virgo wealth. Um, Virgo in Mercury, okay? So your communication is key because you've also got Virgo here with the Magician in the Major Arcana. So what you're manifesting here in terms of um, co your communication skills, your communication and how you communicate your spiritual side, how you communicate your creativity, how you communicate your vision, because this, you know, Magician energy is also about having vision. If you've got vision and you're communicating that in a very clear way, Bang, you've hit the jackpot here. This is amazing. Like Ten of Pentacles and the Magician, go buy a lottery ticket today. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> encouraging gambling here, but this is amazing. You know, it's it's really, all I'm saying is you are harnessing everything that you that you know inherently, spiritually, and it's all going to be cu accumulating together into an excess of legacy and finances, financial reward. Um, so Juliana, you are definitely on the right path here. And, um, especially with this, um, Empress energy as well. Okay. So your Empress energy, which is at the center of your reading, this is goddess of earth. You know, she rules the universe, all these stars in her crown here. They're all the stars of the planets. They represent the universe above, you know, you are drawing down all the, all the energy that's within the sky above you. You're raising your wand and you're being blessed. Okay, and you're sowing seeds now for the future. And the fact that your photography, you know, creativity and firepower is in your crowning position, your creative um, fire photography course, like this is just incredible. And that, that beautiful Empress energy in the center, which is, again, that number three, which is about creation. Healing is like walking through hell barefoot on fire over broken glass with a yeast infection. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, been there as well. Um, not fun. But, you know, if we can channel our pain and suffering into something beautiful, that's art. You know, that is the, that is the path of the artist. That is the path to healing. Um, and that's what makes beautiful art. That's what, that's what makes powerful art, powerful messages, powerful, um, you know, healing, um, and not just for yourself, for others, for your students, for the people around you. Because, you know, we all want to teach, we all have to earn a living, but if we can earn a living from something that we love and then we can bring everybody else along for the ride, that's what we're here to do. You know, we're a consciousness, we're a group, we're a team. And if more people thought like that and can operate on that level, you know, the world would be a much better place. Listen, you know, as I said, yeah, I want a donation for my reading, but it's really small 
And at the end of the day, I'm here to help. I'm here to share. I'm here to heal. I'm here to do all those things as well. And I'm really grateful that you came today to get a reading, Juliana, um, and that we're all here together to also learn and, and exchange and um, share um, each other's stories and each other's um, feelings because, you know, it's good. It's a safe space. We're not here to judge. We're not here to, um, you know, cast judgment on anybody. This is about healing. So, Juliana, I hope you enjoyed your reading today um, and found it helpful. I, I feel like really strongly, um, you know, it was helpful. Oops, I just dropped a card and fell off my chair. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for joining. Um, it's been it's fantastic always to um, share and hear other people's journeys. Um, you are more than welcome, Juliana. I really appreciate your time today. Um, thank you so much. And, yeah, don't forget to uh, hit the like button. If you haven't already, guys, don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. And stalk me on Instagram. Um, a lot of people want to know where I am on socials. I, I really don't like Facebook, but I do post there because I have to let people know what I'm doing with events and things like that. But I tend to uh, love Instagram most of all. So you can find me on Instagram at new.angel.tarot um, and say hi, you know, drop a drop me a DM and say, hey, I, you did a YouTube live for me and stuff like that because I do like messaging people and I do respond. Um, I am very busy, but, you know, keep in touch. Don't just sort of come do a fly-by-night and I never see you again. You know, I like I like um, keeping in touch with people. All righty. So, like Persephone. Yes, I love Persephone. Well, the Empress, uh, if you're interested, the Empress is actually Demeter uh, in terms of Greek mythology and the, the, uh, the archetype of the Empress. She is Persephone's mother because the Empress card is also the card of the mother, but she represents Demeter uh, in uh, Greek mythology, goddess of earth. Miss Priscilla, I love your Instagram. You and your boyfriend make an adorable couple. <laughs> He's actually my husband. I am married. <laughs> See this? <laughs> married. <laughs> But thank you so much. Yeah, I love him to bits. I'll let him know that you uh, said that, Priscilla. So we are going to do your reading next, my love. Lorraine has donated $20. Thank you so much, Lorraine. I really appreciate you being here today. And Brenda D. Art has also donated. Thank you so much, guys. Um, so that's the running order at the moment. Miss Priscilla, any blessings coming my way? We're going to do a quick read for Miss Priscilla. And then we'll get on to the other two. Thank you so much for your patience, everyone. I usually spend about five, ten minutes on everyone. So, you know, um, just hang in there and I will get to you next. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you being here. Any blessings coming my way? Let's have a look at Miss Priscilla. Angel Spirits Guides. Way. Four of Wands, okay? This is beautiful. This is happiness and harmony in the home. What you're creating at the moment, Priscilla, in your home environment is really beautiful. I feel like you're rubbing sticks together. It's like you're burning the home fires. You know, you're keeping things moving. You're keeping things warm and passionate. Um, Seven of Pentacles, you're also reassessing. Um, I think you could even be reassessing your your career path or your job or your money. You're looking at what you're, what's happening um, financially for you, as well as maybe your health and wealth, you know, your body. You might also be looking at um, your diet at the moment and looking at maybe, you know, how you can improve things or, you know, going for a walk or doing some sort of exercise. But I'm also feeling here that you're mainly focusing on maybe your money and you're looking at maybe a new job or something like that as well. Princess of Swords, okay, so Princess of Swords, she is um, Gemini, Libra and Aquarius energy, so you're definitely thinking at the moment, you're using your mind, your mind is very much uh, at the centre, wow, material success is waiting for you, um, creating healthy boundaries when you actually give and take, okay, work-life balance, making sure that what you're putting into a job or a situation or energy 
um, you know, that it's evenly balanced, you know, that you're not actually spending too much or, you know, lending money to people that you're not getting it back or you're making sure that that give and take relationship is right. Or even at work, you know, someone might be saying, oh, can you do this, Priscilla? Can you do this? Can you do this? That you sort of say, put a boundary on it and say, say I have to actually finish what I'm doing first. I've just got to get this part of my job done. You know, it's also about the language that you use with other people as well because you are using your language in a way that um, communicates to people that you are creating healthy boundaries here, okay, because you don't want to get walked over. You know, you don't, you're, not, you're not a doormat. Three of Cups is waiting for you here as well. There's a celebration. There's an energy here where you need to probably spend some more time maybe doing a bit of socialising, hanging out with your girlfriends, having a good time um, and, you know, nourishing yourself, nourishing yourself with – um, also, you know, enjoying yourself, going out for, a, you know, a drink on a Friday night or something and just being part of, you know, socialising and getting out there and enjoying yourself, okay? Because I'm sort of seeing that you might just sort of be sitting at home, This is, you know, sitting at home, you're making everything wonderful at home, but it's also important to go out and just sort of experience new things, you know, create, you know, shake things up a little bit. Sometimes if we stay sort of, sort of, you know, in hermit mode for too long, we kind of lose touch with what's happening in the outside world. <laughs> Speaking of the hermit, you've got that on the bottom of the deck, which is your overarching energy. Um, so interesting. I said that because, as I said, I feel here that there's a need here for you to maybe step out of that. Okay. There's a need here for you to um, pick up the phone, ring a girlfriend, don't text, don't message, call these people, use your voice, use your communication here, ask for what you want. Um, because hermit mode here, I think, is the overall. I think you've been inside for too long. Time to get out and enjoy yourself here. Let's circle back to the Princess of Swords in the center of your reading um, and see if, if there's any messages and gifts here waiting for you if you do decide to leave the house, because this is what's happening. Six of Cups, pleasure. I feel as well, you may want to be reconnecting here with someone from the past. You might actually want to ring an old friend or ring an old um, connection that you have um, and and remember, you know, that you used to have a good time, that you used to go out and enjoy yourself and there's an energy here of nostalgia. So it could actually be connecting with someone from the past but it can also be connecting with something that you used to do which is going out and enjoying yourself, okay? Ten of Pentacles, there's abundance here, okay? There's wealth waiting for you as well. Um, I feel if you're reassessing your wealth, your health and wealth, you've got the Ten of Pentacles right in the center of your reading. Death card here, transformation, Scorpio energy. Um, so this is about you shedding the old skin, getting out there, you know, getting rid of old clothes as well. Just got a message there. You've got old clothes in that cupboard and you don't wear them anymore, you know, you, or you used to wear them when you used to hang out at a certain place. Time to probably, you know, maybe pass those on to um, – you know, charity, okay, and and change that wardrobe. I don't know why, but I'm just saying you need to change your wardrobe because as well. Five of Swords is about defeat, but it's also about cutting away from conversations that no longer serve you. So if you are also in a conversation with someone as well at the moment and the things are just sort of going around in a circle, um, it's time to sort of go, listen, I'm, I'm sort of tired of talking about the same things over and over and it's time to make a cut. Okay, it's, it's swords are about pruning the rose bush, cutting it all back to make sure that you can make way for some new growth here. Okay, because it's sort of moving forward. Um, again, boundaries. All right, seven of wands here is coming up because I feel like you're allowing certain things or certain people to kind of get into your dance space. This is your dance space. This is their dance space. That's about a healthy boundary. You know, you get along with your day. You get on with what you need to do. You know, touch base with people. But then, you know, if you get sort of sucked into their vortex, you don't want that. You know, that's kind of an energy vampire sort of situation going on. And you don't want that. You want to be able to break away from that and, you know, do your do you. Make sure that your day is materially productive and earthbound. Okay, because you've got earth energy either side of you and you've also got the ten of pentacles in the third position. So this is about creating stability for yourself, creating good health and wealth, good habits, good boundaries. Okay, seven, you've got the eight, eight of pentacles, more pentacle energy. Um, you've got six, seven and eight. Okay, you've got six, seven, eight and the ten. All you need is the nine and you'd have um, five uh, five pentacle energies here. So eight of pentacles is about concentrating on your career, concentrating on your craft, concentrating on mastering a skill. If you're good at something, read some books, 
get uh, get educated, level up, you know, get into more knowledge. You know, this is about mastery because you might be good at a few things, but you haven't quite mastered it yet. So I feel there's something here as well waiting for you, Miss Priscilla, that you need to master. Um, eighth card, Four of Cups, Splendid Pleasure. This is beautiful as well. Four of Cups is emotionally waiting for that fourth cup to land. You are looking at things at the moment in a, in a, you know, from an emotional standpoint, maybe from a love perspective as well. It hasn't quite landed yet, but it's on the way. There's someone coming through. Okay. Ace of Wands, new beginning, new passion, new romance. Ooh, this is pretty fiery uh, as well. This is about inspiration. Okay. Um, okay, great. Yeah, so this is new inspiration, someone from the past. And also here. Uh, Ace of Wands, this is a new flame that's coming through for you. Okay, this is new passion. As I said, get rid of that old wardrobe. Go buy yourself something new. Feel special. Feel revived. New new energy is coming through here for you, okay? Okay, so this is all about like getting hot, getting excited, all right? This is, this is a new flame here for you, my love, Miss P. In the root of your reading, Princess of Pentacles. So this is about looking at all angles, okay? This is about looking at earth energy, circling the globe, going all the way around and actually, you know, you're looking at the globe all from all angles now and it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, I feel like you've got you've got all the angles covered, okay? You are not, you're not leaving any stone left unturned when it comes to looking at what you're doing with your job now, what, what you're doing with your money, looking at your wardrobe, getting out of the house, going and enjoying yourself with some girlfriends or getting out of the, going and socializing you need to do this okay because this is what it's saying and all these things when you get in these things into action you're going to start seeing some return okay there's going to be wealth waiting for you new career opportunities you might even meet someone and they find out you know you're looking for a new job or something and they go hey i've got i know they're, they're looking for someone where i work or you know you're going to make connections you're going to make new connections with people because connections and communications is at the top of your reading here princess of swords gemini libra and aquarius energy okay so this is all about using your using your words using your communication skills and closed mouths don't get fed asking for what you want not saying what you don't want always talking in the affirmative and asking for what you do want because if you ask for what you do want not what you don't want that's what you'll attract that's the they're the rules the overarching energy for you miss p is your hermit energy on the bottom of the deck justice this is the card of libra balance order is restored um, it's ruled by Venus, which is all about justice, getting out of the house and actually meeting someone new here as well, especially with, um, you know, Venus energy is here. Libra energy is in the seventh house and it's all, all about relationships. Um, so I feel like you're going to be making some new relationships this month. You're definitely going to be making some new friends. You're going to be um, getting out there and there's going to be this beautiful energy as well of harmony because Venus is all about harmony. Okay, they don't like disruption. They don't like friction. They don't like conflict. Okay, so hermit energy, know thyself, you know, not just not just no longer being a hermit, but also understanding who you are. You know, getting out of the house is one thing, but also knowing what you're capable of. Know thyself. Who's Priscilla? Who does she know herself to be? And that's what this is, your overarching energy is. That's what's holding this entire reading together. This is definitely all about... Um, you know, getting out there and um, understanding who you are, but then seeking balance and knowing that you've got this. So, Priscilla, I hope you enjoyed your reading this week, my love. Thank you so much for joining me, following me on Instagram. I know I see you there all the time. Have a beautiful weekend, uh, whatever you've got planned. Wendy is here, 24 win. Hey, Wendy, how are you going? My beautiful Wendy. I'll tell you guys something really funny. Um, I sing around the house, like, and I don't just sing songs. I just make songs up. I know I do these sort of weird things where I might have words or something come into my mind or I look at the chart, you know, the, the astro chart for the day and um, I make up songs about planets and <laughs> I'm a bit weird like that. But I'll tell you a really funny story. I was walking because my husband and I, we both work from home 
and he has a home office. And the other morning I was walking past his office or in the house and I was singing something about the moon uh, being in uh, the moon in Jupiter or something like that. I was I was singing a song about Jupiter, okay, the planet. Jupiter, don't be stupid, or something. And um, my husband goes, why are you singing about Jupiter? And I said, I don't know. I just walked past your office and thought it was funny. And he said, I was literally just talking to a man on the phone and his name was Jupiter. And I said, you're just making that up. And he goes, no. And then he just picked up a piece of paper on his desk and he showed me an invoice because he has to send invoices to the person he sells products to. And it said the man's name was Jupiter. It was like Jupiter, I don't know, Jupiter Burrows or something like that. But I was, so I was seeing a song about Jupiter and he was literally talking to a, someone on the phone and his name was <laughs> Jupiter. Call me psychic. I don't know. Weird things happen. My weird, my weird, uh, my weird brain does strange things. Serendipity. All righty. Let's have a look who's next. Thank you so much, Priscilla. Stephanie's here as well. Hey, Stephanie. How are you going? She'd also like a reading this week. Thank you so much, Stephanie. As you know, it's going to take me about five or ten minutes to do a couple of other readings before you. So we'll get on to that um, probably about 20 past 11. So in about 20 minutes, my love, I've got two more readings before you. So next we're going to do Lorraine. Lovely Lorraine, you're next, my love. And then we'll do Brenna Art. Lorraine, how are you? Are you still watching? I'm sure you are. $20. Wow, thank you so much. It's so generous of you. I really appreciate it. Um, Lorraine says, hi, darling Renee, please tell me how things are looking for me in the next few weeks. I feel like this 1111 portal, 1111 portal is really changing me here for whatever you see for me, money, health, healing, just whatever you see. Love you. Oh, thanks Lorraine. It's so sweet. All right, let's get started. We'll do Lorraine's reading and see what comes through. And then we'll do Brenna D. Art and then we'll do Stephanie. So two more readings and then we'll get on to Stephanie and then we'll do Brenna D. But we've got to do um, Lorraine first. All right, Lorraine, let's get started. Angels. Oh, not yet. Angel Spirits Guides. Okay. Sorry, guys. Angel Spirits Guides. Angel Spirits Guides. What can you tell me about Lorraine? What's happening with Lorraine in the next few weeks, four to six weeks? The magician just flipped over here, so I'm going to take that. You're manifesting at the moment. Um, you know, you've got a very strong will at the moment. Okay, your will is really strong, Lorraine. It's like your... You're working your magic, you know, you are working, you're co-creating with the universe and you are utilising everything that you have, you know, all the tools are on the table here and you're utilising everything you need to make your dreams become a reality, which is amazing, all right? This is perfect. It's exactly what you are doing at the, when you need to do it, okay? So what you're doing right now is the perfect time. We talked about the 1111 portal. This is the card number one. So it's the first of the ones, Crowning you, you have the Eight of Swords. In your foundation, you have the Ten of Swords. All right, so I feel like you're coming out of something here, Lorraine. You're coming out of the, um, you know, analysis paralysis and it's coming to an end. This is in your foundation, all right? You've been through quite a lot in, in regard to your mental health, um, but it's it's coming, it's it's finishing. In your recent past, yeah, you're coming out of this. Six of Swords is your, is your recovery, and you're in the immediate future here. You've got your nine of wands. So, like, there's a lot of energy here about um, recovering from um, some battle scars. Okay, recovering from battle scars, recovering from toxicity um, and not sort of overanalyzing the situation anymore. But you're very, very determined. Okay, there's a determination energy here in the next four to six weeks where you're like, 
whatever's happened to you, you're absolutely not going to let it get the better of you. You have completely decided to win the war. You know, you are not going down without a fight. This is about great strength and your resilience, your ability to, um, you know, hang in there and actually stick with, um, stick to your guns. <sighs> Will and determination, this is you, the chariot. This is in the position of the querent. Okay, this is your ability to move forward. Cancer energy, okay, this is like you're driving the car hands-free. You don't even need to touch the wheel, okay, because your sheer will, and when we talk about will, we're talking about the magician. You can will what you want to happen. You can will wealth into your life, healing into your life, attract whatever you want to attract. You can will this energy to happen to you, around you, for you, with you, 100%. This is in the center of your reading. And then you've got your chariot. You're on your way. This is the first victory card in the tarot as well because it's number seven. It's the first of the septenaries. Septenary. A septenary is uh, another word for a, a form of seven. Three rows of seven in the tarot, Major Arcana. This is the first victory card. You're on your way. In your environment and how other people see you is the Eight of Cups, uh, turning your back on things that no longer serve you. You've actually filled a lot of cups here that are um, emotionally you've kind of done and dusted, okay? You're done and dusted. You've you've decided that you no longer want to just hang around in water that is essentially um, – polluted or toxic because water energy here is like you're just you know you're just headed off in a new direction now it's piscean energy as well um you know and you're being um very focused because it's saturn in pisces um so saturn in pisces is kind of like having discipline having the discipline to walk away from emotional attachments that um, don't serve you anymore, okay? And acknowledging and having the courage to acknowledge that you know that these things are just no good for you anymore, certain people aren't good for you anymore, whatever that is anymore, it's like you're done. Like, hi, I, I know that I've been here and done that and I'm not interested in it anymore, so you're moving on, which is great. And you're very passionate about where you're headed next, so will and determination, abandoning success, walking away. Your attitude in the position of the attitude is the Queen of Pentacles. Focusing now on your health and wealth. The card of Queen Elizabeth, I always refer to her as this because she is so stoic. She is a constant. She is reliable. She is focused on her financial security and her well-being. And, you know, as the Queen has always said, you know, a brisk walk sorts everything out. You know, she goes for a brisk walk and she, she's fine. You know, she's okay with everything, you know. And I feel like here you're also attracting um, abundance into your life because, you know, the Queen of the Queen of Pentacles is about abundance. But you're attracting abundance into your life as well because you also could be surrounding yourself in nature. You know, I also see you maybe going out on nature walks, making sure that you get your energy up. Uh, to a level here where you're feeling healthy, you've got fresh air circulating in your lungs. Um, you know, surrounding yourself with nature is really healing. So I also feel like that's what you, another energy here that's coming through for the Queen of Pentacles. Your outcome for the reading, wow, Ace of Swords. Okay, so this is all about clarity, um, truth, integrity, um, you know, uh, intelligence. Um, this is the card of Excalibur, the truth. We are um, today. We're talking um, in the moon. In uh, the moon's in Gemini today, um, so today is also about um, providing clear communication and um, the clear communication as well is also um, you know really important about you know clear, clearing your mind. Um, there's clarity here in terms of razor 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 sharp thoughts thinking. You're directing your thoughts in the right way. You're directing your um, what you're manifesting in the right way. You're um, you're just super clear. Okay, it's like you've pulled the sword out of the stone, and you're like, "Let's go. I'm ready. I know where I'm headed. I've got this major 
thought. I've got this major um, idea. I'm using my intelligence. I'm using my my mind. I'm using um, you know everything that I have that I know, because this card is also like the root of air. Okay, so it embodies Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius energy. So this is kind of like a combination of um, you know your communication skills, but also what you want and how you're thinking about relationships. You know, starting new relationships, starting new ways of communicating, and also the community because it's Aquarian energy as well. So you're not just thinking about yourself. You're also thinking about the collective, collective consciousness. That's what this is also about, you know, understanding that our thoughts become things. And when our thoughts become things, as I said many times, what you have in your mind, you hold in your hand. What you think becomes a reality. And what we all think as individuals on an individual level contributes to the greater consciousness. So if we're all being positive, we're all being collectively, um, you know, initiating um, clarity and, and, and good thoughts and good intentions, then the world around us becomes a better place. You know, the world is only as good as the people that are in it. Yeah? So, um. Yeah, I really want to watch that. I think you're right, Juliana. I really feel like I want to watch King Arthur because there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of history in the tarot. If you want to go down that pathway of, um, you know, learning, um, but, you know, anything royal, anything legacy-based, anything, you know, we're always talking. I love the royal family. I don't, you know, part of the reason why my channel has kind of even just got to this sort of small level that it's at is because I've reached out and I've done readings on the royal family and stuff that people are interested in. Even though I like just talking to the everyday person and my channel isn't like obviously reaching 100,000 views every every video, sometimes they don't even reach 100 views, which is slightly depressing, but I don't think about the numbers. I think about the work. I think about what we're doing here and I'm talking about me and on an individual level, but that's what this is all about as well for you. This is about the, what we do, how we think and, you know, project our thoughts and our feelings or our thoughts in particular because our thoughts become things on an individual level and how it affects us, um, you know, mass consciously, you know, on a, on a conscious level um, as a collective. Yeah. So that's super important. I'm going to clarify um, just a couple of things for you as well, um, Lorraine. I'm going to look at the magician in the centre because I feel like I want to find out what you are actually manifesting, even though you've been surrounded by a lot of conflict here and a lot of challenges. You know, you are surrounded by challenges, but irrespective, you are shining. You know, you are like, you know, manifesting your energy here, which is just like, you're like, I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep pushing, 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 pushing. And when you just keep pushing, you're you're raising your own vibration. You're not giving up. And that tenacity is really powerful. These two cards just flew out. Um, I feel this is really important for you to know. First of all, you've got the death card and we're currently in um, Scorpio season. So you are transforming. You are going from cocoon to butterfly. You are, you know, transforming yourself, shedding the old and making way for the new. And then it's clarified here by the emperor, control, regaining a sense of authority in your own life and what you're establishing for yourself. And the emperor as well is the manifestation of law, okay? Not just the law, the government. I'm not talking on a mundane level. I'm talking like your law, your manifestation, your Aries energy your initiate energy. So Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, but the magician is the first card in the tarot. Okay, so what you're manifesting here is power and your ability to transform that power into something new. So I feel you're on your way. Lorraine, I hope you enjoyed your reading today. I really appreciate you joining me once again. You're always so positive and beautiful and happy. And I know that whatever you're doing right now, you're on your on your on your way 100%. So I hope you enjoyed your reading. Thank you so much again for joining me. It's been lovely reconnecting. Um Spirit wants you to know one more thing. 
Seven of Pentacles here as well. Uh, you're reassessing. Um, did you end up selling that house? I know that I remember it's sort of I just got a flashback here. Um, so you mentioned a couple of months ago you and your husband were um, – correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he's going to test my memory now. Um, your husband was contemplating whether or not he should take a promotion within the business that he was working in, the casinos. And um, the reading was something about uh, retiring. Um, the suggestion was to not – then take another step up and 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 take more money. But now is the time to um, you know retire and reassess your finances because you've got the seven of pentacles there, which is why I'm asking that question. And whether or not, um, yes, Dulcie, the readings are still open. Feel free to leave me a super sticker in the chat and your zodiac sign. I'm still doing readings. I'll be online for another 45 minutes. I'm going to shut the channel in 45 minutes. So I do have time for a few more readings. Um, so please um, contribute. Gemini, Sun, Aquarius, Moon, thank you so much. We're remodeling. He did not take a step up. We are doing great. Oh, good on you, Lorraine. Thank you so much for letting me know that. Um, that's right, because you had to fix your house. You were talking about remodeling your house and whether or not you were going to rebuild that house and remodel it to to make it work. Um, now it's all coming back to me. Triple Sun, Moon, Mercury. Thank you, Dulcie. You guys are being freaking awesome today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate um, everyone being here, everyone supporting me. I was away for a couple of a weeks, but it's so good to be back. I'm feeling the love. I'm feeling the love. All righty. So let's move on. Who's next? We have Brynna D. Brynna D. She's from North Wales. How can I find more physical energy to rekindle my fire in a relationship of six years? And build a more full-time art business. Have been trying hard to connect to spirit the last year. And then we'll do Stephanie. Thanks for waiting, Stephanie. Um, and we've got a couple more readings coming through here. So um, what I might do, guys, is I might have to, now that we've got those couple of readings that just came in, I might actually close the reading. Um, so if, I might actually just quickly put that in here before I continue. Just give me one second. Right, just hang in there, guys. I'll be with you in just a second. going to refresh the chat. So I can see what's going on. All 
All right, I'm back. So I just had to put that uh, that message in there, guys, because uh, I've only got a little bit of time left and I want to make sure I get through everybody. So Brina D Art is next. How can I find more physical energy in my relationship, starting an art business and having to be connected for connected to spirit the last year? All right, Brina D, let's get started on your reading. Um My colleagues and I sing voice notes on WhatsApp and talk to each other at work. I'm Sabrina from North Wales. Sabrina, triple sun, moon, Mercury in Gemini. Wow. That's amazing. Thanks for the chance for this. Okay, so it's Sabrina. Sabrina is a um, triple air. Amazing. God, that must be so hardcore. <laughs> I find it difficult just to be a Gemini sun, let alone a triple Gem triple air or triple Gemini. That's crazy. Um, okay. Let's see what's in store for Sabrina. Thanks for waiting. Angel Spirits Guides, Angel Spirits Guides. What does Sabrina need to know today? Thank you so much, Spirit. What does Sabrina need to know today about her business and rekindling? Yeah, here's your wounded warrior, darling. You're definitely uh, coming out of the wars. And I have to say I've been um, trying to uh, bring back my firepower literally over the last six years as well. I got married in 2016 and it's now 2022 and I've struggled a lot as well. So we are on the same path in that regard. I know for a fact I'm picking up on that energy. It's really, really strong. And I totally, totally get it. Okay, so Nine of Wands, here we go. Prince of Pentacles, covering all four corners of what you're doing, okay? Trying to reestablish yourself here from a financial perspective, but also from a health and wealth. Temperance, beautiful. Moderation and patience in a situation. This is also your Sagittarian energy. Um, Sagittarian energy is like tempering. Okay, you're treading water right now, okay? But you're making sure that the temperature is just right. You know, you're not going to make a, you know, a cup of tea and burn someone and scold yourself. You know, you're going to make sure that that, that um, I'm glad for the Sagittarius rising. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're Sag rising. Look at that. There you go. In the future here, you've got the Hierophant. And it's spiritual teaching. You said you were connecting with your spiritual side. This is also about you being a spiritual leader, okay, and showing others, having a very strong moral compass, Okay, so you're a good person. You know the difference between right and wrong. You understand that you're waiting your turn. You understand all those things. You know, you're amazing. Um, I get it. Um, your outcome for the reading is the Three of Swords. Now, this is your healing, all right? I don't want you to get sort of too freaked out about the Three of Swords. But there's definitely an energy here where you might be, um, you know, working with an energy here that, you know, just be careful, just protect yourself a little bit here because there could be a third-party situation going on here where you might um, just need to be on your toes, okay, when it comes to um, a spiritual connection or someone here that it could even be um, someone that you're, meet, you're connecting with here. I've just got a really strong message here about someone that you're connecting with here um, that says that they're spiritual, that says that they can help you, that says um, they say a lot of things, but they're not authentic. Okay, so I don't know who this could be, but you could be picking up on an energy here as well that you could be dealing with something here that's not authentic. All right, so just be careful of that. Bottom of your deck, um, you've got your Emperor card. So this is about you, um, you know, having control over your life, over your your law, your way of doing things, you know, your um, Aries energy here, which is also about power, okay? So I feel like you are regaining a sense of power and control over your life, right? This stuff can't go on forever. You know, things have to change. You know, there's every, every um, seven years or so, there's a cycle. And, you know, we're coming out of a six-year cycle. You know, you yourself said the number six years, but also what we've also got to remember is 2023 is actually a seven year. Okay. So a seven year is like, you know, a, another quarter of um, a, a 28 year cycle in Saturn, if you know what I mean. So it's almost like a quarter, a quarter lesson, quarter time on a major life lesson. You know, it's like quarter time on a major, um, you know, shift 
that's going to happen. And I feel really strongly like 2023 for a lot of people is going to be like a really big year because it is the year of the seven and it also is, um, you know, 2023 when you add 2023 together, that's a seven. So seven in the tarot is the card of the chariot and chariot is about will and determination, your ability to move forward. Check. Um, what am I doing? Let's have a look at your rising. Let's have a look at um, the temperance card in the center of the reading. Princess of Pentacles, she keeps coming up a lot. This is about covering all your bases, circumnavigating the globe, cir circumnavigating what you're actually doing and looking um, around you at your health and wealth and making sure that you've covered all the, you've covered all your bases, okay? Um, because she's sitting in Malkuth. She's sitting in an energy of, you know, you're making sure that you've got what you need, all right? Ace of um, Wands is coming through here. This is a spark. This is new inspiration, Okay, new inspiration that's coming towards you. Um, and, of course, I indicate new love or rekindling that flame. Like you said, rekindling a flame is a new beginning for you here. The Ace of Wands for me is always like a matchstick. You pull it out of a matchbox and you strike that match on the side of the matchbox and it goes and it sparks that new flame, which is amazing. So I do feel like um, four of... Um, uh, Princess of Pentacles here as well. Like you're definitely restabilizing yourself here in terms of your next move, in terms of passion and romance and, and you know, getting excited about love and romance again, which is really important. Okay, fourth card, you've got your five of swords, but it is about, you know, cutting away from things that no longer serve you. Okay, conversations that are redundant as well. Six of Cups, pleasure is waiting for you. Okay, pleasure is here. There can also be an energy here as well of something, come, a card of nostalgia. It's like you are rekindling that flame. You are resurfacing something. Um, seven months from now as well. Is uh, Six months from now as well. I'm getting a message here as well. In six months, I feel like you're back, basically you're going to be back in action. Okay, you're going to be back, back in the saddle. Okay, um, and understanding that you know you can, you can uh, reharness this beautiful pleasure, this pleasure center. Okay, because it's Scorp it's Sun in Scorpio energy. Okay, the Sun is in Scorpio right now, um, but also it's about rekindling how you used to be. That energy of that beautiful um, love exchange, that beautiful sensuality, that beautiful pleasure zone. Okay, so that's five. Number six, you've got your nine of pentacles. Um, financially, you're doing actually quite well. Financially, you're actually quite independent because um, you've got Aries here as your overarching energy as well. So I sort of feel like, you know, your independent business, you know, your business as an artist, your business as an entrepreneur um, is really strong here as well. So you're actually in control of that in a way. Um, financial independence is really important to you um, and you've definitely got that. Seven, you've got your Queen of Pentacles. This is also about your abundance, surrounding yourself in nature, but also, you know, balancing your health and wealth and just being really stoic in your approach. Prince of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, um, Princess of Pentacles. A lot of pentacle energy, nine of pentacles, um, lots of health and wealth energy in your in your middle pillar here. Um, so I also feel like you are devoting your time to your well-being but you're just, you're not rushing. You know, there's no sort of energy here where you're actually rushing. You're actually just plodding along. But the way in which you're plodding along, because you've got Taurus energy here in your immediate future as well, your Taurus energy as well is also about, you know, slow and steady wins the race. You're not in a hurry, which is really important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Princess of Swords. Okay, this is your, your triple energy, your triple Gemini energy. Okay, um, your triple energy here is about um, being innovative. Okay, this is a time for you to also innovate, do things differently. You know, if someone's just selling their stuff on Etsy or someone's just doing such and such, which is what everybody else does, now's the time to start innovating. Now's the time to start doing things differently. Okay, they're saying innovate, you know, turn something on its head. Do it in a different way. You're a Gemini. You can do that. You can sell ice to Eskimos. 
So your artwork and the way that you present yourself and the way you, you're represented, this is about changing that. This is about, you know, flipping it on its head. It's about um, being innovative. Wow, Madonna energy. Queen of, Queen of Wands is fire. Queen of Wands is passion. Queen of Wands is creativity. You can create whatever you want here. You've got firepower and it's right next to the Princess of Swords. So it's when you put your mind to use, when you when you think of these things that are, um, you know, that you're passionate about, that you can put into motion. These are the things that are gonna that are going to empower you, and you're going to be in the spotlight as a result. Final card in the root, wow, King of Pentacles. So what you're doing with your artwork, you have got Queen of Pentacles here and King of Pentacles here. Long term financial security, long term career path. But what you're doing is just solid. So however you're pushing this forward, um, it's going to serve you in the long run because you're in control. And Aries energy is the beginning of the season. Aries energy is at the beginning of the wheel. So even though you've still got this healing and you've still got you know energy around you that is probably not so um, honest, you know, you tend to be interesting to see what planets you have in your seventh house because whatever planets you have in your seventh house um, or wherever Venus is actually sitting in your houses, um, it's also what you attract. Now, I'm sorry, but did you say, correct me if I'm wrong, let me just check this. Sun, moon and Mercury in Gemini. Right, you didn't. Oh, your Venus is in Mars. Okay, so you do go for what you want, right? But you, what tends to happen is you can, you can you can end up hurting people along the way. So if you're getting the Three of Swords a lot, this is an energy that's coming up here where you're saying Mars is the planet of I want and what you get you want. And this Aries energy here is ruled by Mars. So you're very determined. You're very passionate about what you want, but you've just got to be careful and refine things a little bit to uh, obviously make sure that you don't knock people out on the way through because you do have a tendency to do that if you've got Venus in Mars, okay? And that was sort of what I was alluding to um, and what you're attracting into your life as well. But what you do attract into your life is being first. You're a winner. You know, you don't like taking second place. I'm going to clarify the Emperor for you on the split. King of Cups, okay, so this is your emotional um, success and being able to master your emotions, okay? Mastering your emotions is really important. Mastering your emotions is going to get you where you want to go. Now, normally I look on the bottom of the deck, but I didn't this time. I did it on the split because there was an energy here. There was a, there was a message here for you to realize that as far Fiery and as passionate, as as determined and ambitious you are, there's a need here for you to master your emotions. This is cancer energy. You need to soften that a little bit. So I'm hoping this is resonating for you and it makes sense. Um, but I feel like, you know, you're coming out of something here that you're now looking at all corners of the globe. You're actually harnessing and managing things with moderation and patience. But your ability to be passionate and a creative leader here is very, very strong because you've got a power couple card going on here, Queen and King of Pentacles together in your foundation. So it's really, um, you know, if you can if you can use both that um, yin and yang energy or masculine and feminine energy together and you can combine that together, you can achieve whatever you want. But you do have to soften your approach just a little bit, you know. I'm just telling you how it is. Um, so I'm hoping it, you know, didn't, um, hurt your feelings or anything. But um, in the immediate future here, connecting with your spiritual side is incredible. Connecting with um, potential um, spiritual leadership, you know, your artwork is also going to be almost like talisman for you. Okay, so artwork in terms of using it as in terms of talisman is really important. And just to clarify as well for you guys, if you're unsure of the difference between a talisman and um an amulet, an amulet is something that you wear for protection, that you want to keep things away from you, okay? Um, you want to keep things away from you with an amulet because a, a amulet starts with A, so it's what you want to keep away from you. A talisman is something that you want to draw from or what you want to bring towards you. So, for example, 
I like to have my large um, tarot cards in front of me as well. And sometimes I use t large tarot cards like this as an actual talisman because I can actually draw from this energy of the hanged man, for example, if I was having the hanged man. But you can probably see over here I've got the magician. So I want to draw the energy of mer Mercury um, from the magician towards me. So talisman is what you want to bring towards you and amulet is what you want to push away from you. And also, um, you know, like so like I said, um, Sabrina, you your artwork is a, is a form of a talisman. It's actually going to bring towards you what you need in your life, the healing that you need, the messages that you need. Yes, you're investing your heart and soul into your artwork, but your artwork, when it hangs on the wall, is essentially a talisman that people can draw from because they're bringing that energy towards the viewer, the person who is looking at your artwork. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, give the video a thumbs up, guys. If you like the readings as well and you experienced a tarot reading here with me today, please check out the uh, description. Uh, there's a link there where you can leave a review uh, of your tarot reading on my Google page. Um, that would also really help me a lot and just share your experiences with other people. So if people do want to pay for a reading or book something private with me um there's confirmation that um you know i'm uh, doing my job so i hope you really enjoyed that uh brina d sabrina from north wales uh thank you so much i really appreciate you being here today here we go so next we have stephanie thanks for waiting uh stephanie I'm just catching up on what you've said here. Stephanie's at a bit of a crossroads. An old client reached out from my former work and I'm not sure if I should pursue a contract with them while I build my new business or if something else will come in. I have a lot of support from family, but this month and last month have been challenging. Um... Stephanie, you're an Aries, aren't you? C refresh my memory. You're an Aries. But Stephanie is next. We're ready to go, Stephanie. I'm assuming you're still there. You're building your business, you've had another offer, you want to know what's going on, and the last month or two has been really tough. So let's find out um, what Spirit wants you to know, and we'll go from there. I'm pretty sure you're in Aries, because you do like, you do often, I think, talk about your career quite a bit, and Aries tend to do that. They want to know where they're going next. All right. Let's have a look. Are you ready, Stephanie? Where are you? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Dulcie. 11 11. Where's Stephanie? Is she there? Where are you, dear? I'm waiting to see a response from you. I'm going to do this reading for Stephanie. Angel Spirits Guides, Angel Spirits Guides. What does Stephanie need to know about this offer? What's happening with Stephanie? What's happening with Stephanie? What does Stephanie need to know? What advice, Tarot, do you have for Stephanie? What advice do you have? Thank you, Spirit. What advice do you have? Oh, wow, that was really strong. Four of Wands, perfected work. Okay, so this is at the centre of your reading. Crowning you, you've got the Death card, transformation. Ooh, this is really exciting. Um. 
Bottom of the deck here, you've got illusionary success, um, which is karma. It's a card of karma, and it's also the card of um, uh, having to choose um, a cup. But don't take the first cup that you see because it's a little bit um, all that glitters is not necessarily golden. So, Stephanie, I feel really strongly here that there's an energy where you're getting shown something here, but it's it's illusionary. It's not quite the real deal. Let me keep going and seeing what's here. Queen of Cups is in your recent past or in your past here, which is about you, um, Scorpio energy again. Um, it is Scorpio season, but not only that, I feel like you've been the harbinger of people's problems. You know, you're like everyone's telling you all their stuff and you're carrying um, a lot of secrets for people and a lot of emotional baggage, um, which is probably what's been challenging for you in the last month or two as well. You said support from family and things like that, but you're taking things on board here on a really deep level, on a very emotional level, on a Scorpionic level. Um but you're being very stoic in the process, even though your um, energy here is kind of like fixed because it's a fixed energy here in the past. In your future here, you've got the Prince of Cups, okay? This can also indicate new love coming through. I know you uh, asked about the career thing, but there's also a cup being offered to you here. There's someone coming to give you some reprieve. Um let me know in the comments below. I'm not sure if you've walked away because I probably took a little bit too long to get to you today, but you can re-watch this uh, if you watch the replay. Um, you've also got your Prince of Cups here. Okay, so coming up in the next four to six weeks, I feel like there's a love offer coming towards you. There's a knight. Three of Wands, establish strength. I feel like um, you can establish your own business here. This is about your own business in the centre and also you, where you're sitting here with me today. Threes are about creation. Threes are about stability, creating your own uh, business here, your own entrepreneurial uh, work. In your environment and how other people see you, you've got your King of Pentacles. Now, King of Pentacles is about anything that's long-term, but I feel here the more energy that you put into your own business here, you're going to be better off long term. If you accept an offer from somebody else, which is illusionary, and that's in the foundation here. So I'm not convinced that this person who's contacted you, contacted you is going to be for your best, uh, best interest or best outcome. Because at the end of the day, a lot of people think, oh, I can make more money if I do other things for other people. But what we're actually um, sacrificing is, is the time and energy it takes to build your own business, the time and energy it takes to actually establish your own connections and use your time wisely. Sure, you might not be making as much money in the process, but the long-term benefit is there. The long-term benefit is financial. The long-term benefit is more secure. And the long-term benefit here, especially with Capricorn energy, is you, CEO of your own business. Because the minute that we ask someone to get involved in something that we're doing or the minute that we start, um, you know, splintering our time and energy into something else, it's not 100% ours. We're working with another energy here. We're working with another energy here that is not 100% um, devoted into our own entrepreneurial work, which is the question that you asked which is why in your environment here, people are attracted to you because they can see that you can see the bigger picture. Your attitude is the magician. Wow, manifesting your own thing here. This is like all you. I, I would 100% um, feel, I feel really strongly that, you know, this opportunity that's coming into you is is not what it's cracked up to be. And also there's um, other things that are going to be taking up your time, which could be, a new love coming in. But on this side of the reading, which is over the next four to six weeks, I also feel like, um, you know, you're going to be focusing your energy here on manifesting your own business, building your own empire, looking at something here that's for you, not for others, not for somebody else. Uh, final card here is the moon. Moon is in Gemini today. Whatever your moon sign is as well, I just want you to double check that because whatever your moon sign here, that's also going to tell you a few things and how you're going to respond. Um, but also um, there's something hidden here, okay, and that's sort of confirming uh, my suspicion about um, this is Piscean energy, okay, so this is about illusionary 
It's also about illusion. It's about sort of meeting someone in the middle. But I also really feel strongly here there's something hidden. Whenever I see the moon card, it's kind of like a hidden secret. It's like something behind closed doors, something that you're not aware of. Um, so I feel really strongly here that there's something here that you're not aware of. Okay, so just be mindful of that. Bottom of the deck, which is your overarching energy, is the King of Cups. Um, this is about you mastering your health and wellness business. You've got King of Cups right next to the Queen of Cups on the far side of the reading here as well. And I really feel um, that uh, the overarching energy here is concentrating on a business here that focuses on health and wealth, but also wellness or some sort of um, emotional happiness fulfillment. Um Clarifying that, you got the Ten of Cups. That's what's going to fill your cup 100%. So your overarching energy is the King of Cups, which is mastering your emotions, but then it's clarified here by the Ten of Cups, which is your abundance, emotional abundance, emotional fulfillment, 100%, you, you. You know, this is what you're passionate about. This is also about wellness and bringing healing to others. Yes, you are an Aries. Okay, so I did get that right. Um, and Aries is here, is at the center of your reading, and Aries is here in the position of the querent. So you're coming up double here. But the the message here um, for you, Stephanie, is when you rewatch this video, you will see this section if you can rewatch it on the replay. I'm sorry it took me a while to get to you. But the foundation here is illusionary success, okay? This is not this it's offer that's come through here. It's not quite right. There's something here that you're going to be transforming for yourself. You're in your you're on your own personal journey here. You're on your own path to transformation. And the outcome for your reading is that moon card, which is something that's hidden from you. So there's something on going on behind the scenes here that you don't know about. And my gut feeling here is just something's not quite right. This is illusionary. Um, it looks sparkly. It looks um, attractive. It looks like something that you want to go for, but again, I mean, look, this is just my intuition. If if it's if you want to do you, that's fine, but I feel like there's an energy here where you're manifesting your own business here. It's sort of again, don't you don't want to split yourself across too many things. You know, you want to stay uh, in an energy where you're manifesting your CEO energy, your business your long-term financial security because as soon as you start working on other things for other people you're diverting your attention and your energy into somebody else's project it's not about just getting paid it's about building blocks so whatever you want to do and however you want to build the more time and energy you put into your own building block the bigger that castle will grow and that's where your focus is and you're clarifying the overarching is another king as well, which is your health and wellness business and also what's going to bring you the most joy, which is the Ten of Cups. And what's going to bring you the most joy is your own business, not someone else's. So uh, I'm going to clarify the moon as well because I feel like you need to hear this. They're saying clarify the moon. Show me the moon. What's hidden from Stephanie? No, there's too many cards there. I just want one. Can you clarify the moon, please, for Stephanie? What does Stephanie need to know about the hidden? There we go. Um, got the Aries card again. This is you. Okay. So what's hidden here is someone as well from the past. Uh, there's two messages here. Someone here is about um, uh, wanting control, but this is also about you harnessing your own energy because you are the card of you are the card of the emperor. This is your card. Okay, so they're kind of just drumming it in here that you need to do you. You need to have your own business. You need to sort of – the moon card here as well as what's hidden from you. Perhaps it's your ability to see yourself in the mirror. Perhaps it's your ability to see your emotional potential, your own reflection in the face of the moon. But also there's a third message here. This person from the past could also be – very uh, strong personality, someone very difficult. And I think that's what the caveat is with the moon and this person that's reached out to you as well, someone with a very strong personality who's not um, is going to be a bit controlling. The emperor energy is like lots of different things, as is all the cards. The, all, all the cards have their own inherent meanings and their own certain energies, but it's how we apply those meanings to the question at hand and the person we're reading for. So, yes, this represents you as, as an Aries, but also 
because it's clarifying the moon card. It's clarifying what's hidden. It's clarifying what's giving you anxiety. It's clarifying the reflection of who you are and your ability to, to be in control. Run your own show. Have your own business. And maybe not. Maybe avoid. You know, you could be dodging a bullet here as well. <laughs> and the bullet that you're dodging is this person who's got a very strong personality and it might not might not be what it's cracked up to be, which is why we've got that seven of cups in your foundation, which is illusionary success. All righty. So that's your reading, Stephanie. Uh, let me know how things go for you. Um, you are transforming. It's in your crowning position. So let go of the old and make way for the new. And the new is all about you. It's about the new you. It's about your new business, your new future not someone from the past. Okay. Let me know how things go, Stephanie. I hope you found the reading helpful. Please keep in touch as per usual. I love seeing you all the time and seeing your, your little hearts and your support. I really appreciate it very much. All right, guys. I've got a couple more to go. Um, I'm going to scroll all the way back here. Who's next? So next we have, we've got two more, Gemini Sun, Aquarius Moon. My ex files court papers to charge custody order or is he all talk and not following and not follow through on what he's telling my son? I have majority of custody. Oh, I'm so sorry you're going through this stuff, uh, Gemini Sun, Aquarius Moon. And then we'll do Dulcie, and that's the last reading for today. So I'm capping these uh, sessions at two hours. I feel like sometimes I've gone for three or four hours in the past, and it's just too long. Like I can't, I can't do that anymore. So I've got to try and get as much as we can done in a two-hour period. So, Gemini Sun, yeah, you got your Five of Swords here. Um, my love, this is strife. This is um, material success, give and take in the relationship. I'm just getting started here. And the Ten of Wands, this is coming to an end. Um, I feel like in about 10 days' time, you're also going to get some news here that um, could turn things around for you. I also feel like um, your question is about whether or not this person is bluffing you. You know, calling your bluff, even though you've got majority of custody. Gemini Sun, um, what is your partner's or ex partner's zodiac sign as well? Um, you're a very intelligent woman, you know what's going on. Uh, Aquarius Moon as well, you actually are thinking collectively, so you are not just. You're not one. You're not one-dimensional. You're multifaceted. You're holographic. If I want to even use that term, you're holographic. Let's have a look here. Six of Wands. You've got a victory here for you. Victory is coming through. Things are going to change in about ten weeks. I feel there's something coming through for you here. Ten weeks from now, but I am going to pull you the reading. Thank you for taking my reading. This situation he's causing upsetting. My son, so much so the school called me today and he was crying in class. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. And what's your son's zodiac? I'll do a quick thing on your son as well. What's happening? What's your son's sun, uh, sun sign, darling? There's news. There's news coming in 10 days and in 10 weeks you're going to have resolution, I feel. Let's do the reading and see what comes out, okay? That's more important. Angel spirits, guides, angel spirits, guides, what can you tell my Gemini son? What's going on here with my Gemini son? Thank you, spirit. What's going on with my Gemini son? He's a Scorpio. Gemini son. What's happening with Gemini son? What's happening with Gemini son? Oh, wow. You've got uh, Aquarius energy coming through here, which is um, the star. They're saying, don't take your eye off the prize. Keep going. You've got the five of cups here as well, which is obviously your sorrow, your heartbreak, your your disappointment, your loss in pleasure, 
all of those things. That's your current energies. Eight of Swords, um, don't overthink it. It feels like you're overthinking it at the moment. Um, I understand your son is suffering um, and he's not feeling great. The moon here is um, anxiety, but it's also about the hidden. Could be something under the surface here. And the hanged man, okay? So this is about something being on hold. This is suspension, okay? Nothing's moving right now. So you feel like you're kind of just literally hanging there. Um, bottom of the deck, you've got the seven of wands. This is about creating healthy boundaries, okay? Um, not letting someone sort of overstep what they're entitled to. Uh, not overstep uh, anything that you've created and being strong, okay? So this is um, Leo in Mars energy. So this is about understanding what you, you know, setting those boundaries basically um and and leo energy here is having grace at the same time like you can be really powerful when you do something but it's all in the grace in which you do it um but there is something on hold here okay the moon and the hanged man it's, it's a suspension energy in the next uh, at the moment in the center of the reading here over analyzing this is the eight of swords shortened force it's like um analysis paralysis that's the name that's the sort of energy of the of the card so the energy of the card is analysis paralysis don't overthink it take the blindfold off what else do we need to know and i'll give you a quick storyline as to what's coming up show me the eight of swords for gemini sun show me the eight of swords for gemini sun and your your son as well because he's a scorpio family is really important to scorpio um and he's in scorpio season at the moment it's his, his season so he's going to be extra 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 he's in his he's resonating in his own energy at the moment so he's going to be extra sensitive to a lot of things okay he's going to be extra sensitive and perceptive as to what's going on around him because he knows that okay i got the hierophant card here which is the card of marriage over analyzing the marriage uh don't overthink it okay then we've got the temperance card which is sagittarian energy moderation and patience in the situation is required and mastering your emotions with the king of cups okay so making sure that you stay just balanced you know work with spirit create that spiritual alchemy you're being downloaded at grace here at the moment it's like a it's like an energy here where you know that you've got this okay because you do and I don't want you to be worried, even though things you're, you're confused at the moment as well, because the moon card can also indicate anxiety. And it's like you're you're overanalyzing it because you're thinking, what's behind the curtain? Is there something behind the curtain here that, um, you know, you can't see? So card number five, we've got the eight of cups, walking away from things that no longer serve you. Just, just, just like, you know, it's almost like you're laughing at this person. It's almost like you're laughing at them going, oh, you're just being ridiculous. Like, what do you want about? You've got no, you don't have a leg to stand on. You're walking away from that stuff. You've done it. You've been there. You've had the conversation. You don't need to talk to him about it anymore. I think it's a lot of hot air. That's the energy that I'm picking up here. But we'll get to the end of the reading. Six, uh, another temperance card here. So we've got two. You've got two of the same energy here, which is about spiritual alchemy. Sagittarian energy. The wonder of the world, philosophy, traveling. Seven of Cups, illusion. It's illusionary. He's full of full of BS. It's not real. What he's saying is it's it's an idle threat. Okay? It's not it's it's an idle threat. It doesn't mean anything. It's actually illusionary, which is what you want to hear, which is good. Um, but it's about you kind of turning the back, turning the page on that and not letting him um ruffle your feathers or your son's. Seven, eight, Queen of Swords. This is Aquarian energy as well. Off with the head. Look at this image. You know, uh, I'm not saying that your husband is a bad person, but you're obviously divorced for a reason. Um, but I'm also feeling here you're being pretty ruthless. You know, off with his head. This is a this is a head over heart decision that you need to make. New, but you're being quite cold in the process. But you have to be this way. This is a head over heart decision that you need to make you know, cutting someone off, being the queen of pentacles, continuing to be the mother, continuing to be independent, continuing to be the provider, health and wealth. This is the queen energy again. She's come up a lot today. She's come up quite a few times. You've got two queens here as well, which you're in a position of power. Okay. He's an idiot. He's an angry idiot. <laughs> yeah, Gemini male energy can be uh, act first, think later. 
That is definitely their energy. And they're also the card of the King of Wands. And the King of Wands is just usually someone who says a lot of things. They're full of, it's like literally hot air. Okay, it's a lot of hot air. In the root of your reading here, you've got the Empress. This is you. You're the mother. Okay. Exactly. You're the Aries. I know, uh, you're, he's the Aries. Yes, I know that. This is in your foundation. Um, male Aries are, you know, again, hot-headed. They, they, they say things and then they think about it later. They don't think it through when they say something. Okay. And they're accident prone. They rush into things thinking that they're going to get there first when really, um, you know, they're, they're just, yeah, they're, they're quite juvenile. Um, but also this energy here is in your foundation. This is in the root of your reading. The Empress energy here is all about um, being the mother, being abundant, sowing a new seed for a season. And I'm going to clarify the Seven of Wands with the bottom of the deck. Emperor, there's your Aries. This is your partner. Creating healthy boundaries with this person, just letting them know that they've only got a certain amount of access, they've only got a certain amount of, um, you know, privilege uh, in the situation. Yes, he's the father, and this also can indicate the, the card of the father, not only the Aries, but an Aries father. You can't make this stuff up. Um, it's clarifying that seven of wands, which is about that, that healthy boundary, understanding this is your dance space, this is my dance space. But what I'm seeing in the root, if you're reading here, you've got the queen of swords, which is your mental ability, your ability to cut through anything, Aquarian energy. And you will think of the group. You're not just thinking just about yourself. You're thinking about the family, the unit, which is Aquarian energy. Okay. And the queen of pentacles is about being the provider. You know, you're a rock for your son. You're a rock in the family. You know, you think about things. You're an intelligent woman. And then in the foundation, this is the empress. So the card of the mother, creation, abundance. You know, this is you in the foundation here. So what I'm seeing here in answer to your question real quick is uh, basically, yeah, he's um, he's trying to call your bluff is what I'm trying to get at. Um, I don't think that this person really uh, has much of a leg to stand on um, and you are going to be retaining uh, a sense of order and control and stability and constant within the family and stability for your son. And that's what I was seeing in the bottom with those two queens and then the empress in the foundation. It's like, you know, you definitely know where you're at. And I'm hoping that even if I told you something you already know, it's providing you with a sense of clarity and confirmation of things that you already know. So stick to your guns, do what you have to do, but create those healthy boundaries. That's what the overarching energy was in your reading. All righty. So Gemini Sun, please keep in touch. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, guys, if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Um, you're in a really good spot. Um, and we all, you know, support you. We all support each other in this channel. We all support each other in the chat. Um, and the energy that we provide one another, you know, whether or not it's behind a name, an identity, someone that's watching, someone that's in the chat. It all contributes to a higher level of support, foundation, um, you know, and looking out for one another. That's what it's all about. So, Gemini Sun, uh, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here today. Join us again next time. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want to check out when I'm available next or just come back to my channel every now and then. I will schedule uh, the next live this afternoon um i'll schedule it for when i have to look at my calendar because there's lots going on between now and christmas i'm literally working every weekend um, between now and christmas so i'm so busy but i will um, pop in another live reading so get notified on that so you get a reminder and come and join me again uh, very very soon Again, check out the links in the description. If you'd like a private reading, please let me know uh, by my website. Um, and we go into a lot more detail than what I do here on the YouTube channel. But, you know, there's all that good stuff in the description. You can go check that out and read for yourself. Lucky last reading for the day, we've got Dulcie. Um, thanks so much for joining me today, Dulcie and Lorraine and Wendy and... Everybody who's watching and, and contributing in the chat, thank you so much. Let's uh, do this last and final reading for Dulcie. 
and see what's coming through for you. Let's have a look what I need to find out here first. Um, Dulcie, here we go. Date of birth is the 17th of the 10th, so that's October. Oh, your birthday's in five days. Henry is, you're a Scorpio. Oh, sorry, what am I saying? It's November. <laughs> Bizarre. You're a Libra, I beg your pardon. Uh, Henry is the 3rd of January. He's a Capricorn. Lately, I have felt Henry close <gasps> and love and noticed that he opens up more. I just want to know if he is my forever because at times I feel like I've known him forever. We are so alike in many ways. Okay. My moon and sun is in Libra. What else have you said here? I keep seeing 333 and 107 or H3. 1017 together. Today is my dad's anniversary. Oh, I'm so sorry, Dulcie. And his date of birth is March 11, 1956. 3 and 11. He died the same day as he was born. Oh my goodness. Wow, that's crazy. Hang on. If your dad's anniversary and he died on the 11th of the 11th, but his birthday is March the 11th, that's not the same day he was born. That's the 3rd of March, not the 11th of November. Anyway, all good. I saw him when I was 17. It was strange, but I felt warmth, even though it was only for a few seconds. Um... I, I feel and know I can see his face till his dying days. So I think the question here mainly is Libra energy and you want to know about this person who is a Capricorn and you want to find out if this person is your forever. So this is a love reading for Dulcie about the Capricorn. Let's get started. Okay. And maybe your dad might come through. Pisces. If he was born on March the 11th, he might be here with us in spirit. Henry. Okay. Dulcie and Henry. Let's see what comes out. Last reading for the day, guys. Let's make it a good one. Angel spirits, guides. Angel spirits, guides. What can you tell Dulcie about Henry? What can you tell Dulcie about Henry? Okay, Ten of Wands is here. So this is like something you've been carrying for a while. I think it's work or something as well. And then you've got the Empress here, which is about abundance. Uh, responsibility. I think you're sort of letting your responsibility get in the way of um, your own happiness. Like your work life is probably overtaking your Venus energy here. This is card of Taurus and Libra. It's ruled by Venus. So it's almost like you don't have a work-life balance here with what's happening in your love life. And what happens is when we don't have work-life balance, you don't allow the love in. It's like you're not you're not carving out that time. You're not creating space for that. You're not saving space for that, I think, is more to the point. Are you... What are you carrying here in terms of responsibility? It could be family. It might not be a job, but there's a lot of responsibility here, okay, that you're you're carrying for everybody. You're carrying the load, basically. Um, it could be as the mother itself, because this is the card of the mother. Do you have children, Dulcie? If you're not, uh, if you don't have your own children, this is about you just basically creating something here for the future. This is like also a new season for yourself. Let's have a look. Three of Wands here. Your ships are coming in over, over time. Yeah, three kids. You've also got the number three here and you've also got the number three here. So three children, the mother, over time, ten of Wands. That's, that's you. You're like you're at breaking point 
Oh, you poor love. Three kids, single mum, and overtime. The centre of your reading here got the three of wands, which is beautiful because it's also about a, th- um, a, th- a number three. Um, but what this is telling me here is your ships are coming in. In terms of work and trade, because wands are about work and trade, um, you're going to get reward for effort here. Yes, you've probably been doing making extra money, but I feel like there's also something else coming towards you here. Sometimes spirit wants to show you different things. Maybe it's not just about love. Maybe it's about, you know, balancing your work and home life as well. So there's spirit wants to come through and show you the things that you need to hear today. Temperance, moderation and patience in the situation. You're balancing, working with spirit, creating spiritual alchemy. Your outcome for the reading here is eight of cups, walking away from things that no longer serve you. And the bottom of the deck, you've got your prince of cups. Here he is, the knight in shining armor. So that's your overarching love energy, which is great. But at the center of your energy here, I'm really just getting that feeling here where it's like you're, you know, you're having to create, you're you're trying to balance your work and home life here and be the mother and, and provide and all this sort of stuff with temperance and and empress either side of your three of wands in the center because your work is obviously your financial security um, and it's what's keeping you afloat. Um, but overall here, you've got your beautiful Prince of Cups, which is your love energy, and that's your overarching energy for the reading. So we're going to find out more about Henry. This is Henry. All right, this is beautiful. Let's go to the center of the reading with the Three of Wands. Angel Spirits Guides, Angel Spirits Guides. What does Dulcie need to know about work-life balance, family, and love coming through? Angel Spirits Guides, Angel Spirits Guides. What does Dulcie need to know about love, family, Reward for effort, promotion even, maybe. What's coming through for Dulcie? What are the messages she needs to hear today? Capricorn energy, what's happening with Henry? Thank you, spirit. Wow. Capricorn energy, the devil card. Okay, so this is this is Henry, right? Coming through here, number one. Number two, five of um, cups here. Now, this is about looking at what you do have, not what you don't have. What you do have at the moment is a connection, but also I feel here there's a connection here with him that he's um, healing from something. I don't know if he's been divorced or he's coming out of something here, but there's an energy here where he's still suffering, okay? This is not about you. This is about him. So he's coming out of something here. Oh, you got announced today that you got a bonus for October. Well, there you go. Reward for effort. It's at the top of your reading, all right? perfect um the discipline that you've paid the discipline that you've also achieved here is also represented in the devil card so discipline is as well reward for effort but the pain that he's feeling here is right underneath his card as well so the the devil card is also representative of henry and this is what he's going through because this is the card straight after it which is loss sorrow disappointment you just said then, oh, okay, he's going through a divorce. So, yeah, that's what I was picking up on. He's going through that kind of pain. Ten of swords, okay. It's basically, his mental health has reached a peak. His mental health here has reached a peak of um, just toxicity, can't deal with it anymore. But the good thing is about the ten, the ten of swords is the darkest hour is always before the dawn. Okay, so this has reached its peak. Tens are about excess. So whatever he's experiencing right now, it doesn't get any worse. It's like he's reached the, the threshold. He's reached the top of the, the gamut here. It's not going to get any worse. It's like it's ending, okay, which is good. Uh, number five, judgment, end of a 20-year cycle. Did he happen to be married for around 20 years? Can you Do you know how long he was married for? Because this is the end of a cycle. This is also uh, a resurrection. Okay, this is about family being resurrected. This is also his true calling. You could be his true calling. This is sort of what I'm picking up here. Okay, 20 year marriage. Um, but also his his opportunity to listen to his true calling over 14 years. Okay, well that's fair enough. But this is a phoenix rising from the ashes energy. This is his ability to rise above and, and come out of this. This is Henry 2.0, okay? Whatever you're feeling, your intentions here, your love for him, your your similarities, how you're connecting with him, it's like you're on point, 
but he's coming out of something here that he hasn't come to you yet because he's still coming out of this, but he will be rising from the ashes, which is amazing. Okay, which is really, really good. So sixth card here, five of pentacles. Uh, the divorce is not going to be easy for him. He probably will come out losing uh, money. He's going to lose some money in the divorce. He's not going to – it's also probably why he's very concerned because Capricorn energy, um, they like to win and they like to have money. And I feel like he's coming out of this here being left out in the cold and he's going to come out of this um, – Yeah, he's going to come out of this losing um, quite a bit of cash, unfortunately. Nine of pentacles, though, is a financial independence. Uh, so, look, pentacle energy here, he might actually be coming out independently, but he's going to be sort of shut out of something. Maybe he's being shut out of the home. If he has children, maybe his wife or his ex-wife isn't going to let him in. The door's been slammed in his face and he's feeling very left out. Okay. Eight, uh, ten of cups, there's abundance waiting for him here. Ten of, ten of cups, this is where you come into the picture. Okay, this is where you come into the picture. Ten of cups is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, happily ever after. So you've got seven cards, eight cards, nine cards, king of swords. This is the court case, Libra energy, but it's also you. This is the card of Libra in the courts. So it's next to the ten of cups, which is your energy next to him. Ten of, ten of Cups is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the happily ever after. Um, core energy, but also this is you, okay, being being strong. Like you just said, uh, I saw him through, I helped him out, uh, put him in a financial bind, uh, all that sort of, sort of stuff. The root of your reading, uh, at the bottom of the reading here, we've got the Five of Wands. Now, this energy is not going to go away. I feel like this energy here, he needs to turn his back on because the Eight of Cups is over here is the fine art of like balancing that energy of, you know, um, you know, temperance is like moderation and patience with his family, with his ex, with all this kind of BS that he's going through. That's always going to be there. Okay, I want you to know that because I think that there's an energy here where you guys can start over because he's going to be offering you this cup here. He's coming through as the Prince of Cups. But in the foundation, there's always going to be like petty arguments. He said, she said energy. There's always going to be, you're going to have maybe, you might even be picking up on a, an energy here of a feeling of competition. But at the end of the day, they're going through courts, they're going through divorce. It's over. But he has to walk away from things that no longer serve him. But unfortunately, there's going to be an energy here in the foundation where there's always going to be that kind of he said, she said energy, that sort of petty arguments. Let's clarify the king of, uh, let's clarify this knight in shining armor on the bottom. Wow. Six of cups. This is also the card of pleasure. Um, Scorpio, sun in Scorpio. Um, it is a card of nostalgia. So he might also be going through something here that's like he's going through a, a memory thing as well. But it is all about pleasure. It is all about, um, you know, a recovery. Sixes are about recovery. Um, so I feel like you're also like providing him with that beautiful a sense of recovery here as well. And the fact that you are going to be essentially someone from your past, so you're embodying the energy of the, the nostalgic energy, um, I feel is really um, really relevant. Um, but overall here, you're balancing your career path here. You're getting the reward for effort, but he's coming through here in terms of sorrow, but there's also financial independence here and, and there's like a happily ever after here, but there is going to be this competition in the bottom. So just be mindful of that. Uh, I'm just going to pull you one more card here because I feel like uh, let, let's clarify the Eight of Cups. Let's clarify what you're walking away. What's walking away from things that no longer serve you like that? And I think that that's him. That's him. That's his energy of turning his back on his ex. But there is movement because Eights are about movement. So it's about you know moving away from um, from that Eight of Cups. Show me the Eight of Cups for Dulcie. No, I'm not even going to look at those because that's too many. Okay, Eight of Cups. Show me the Eight of Cups. Thank you, Spirit. Eight of Cups. 
Eight of Cups. Show me, can I clarify that Eight of Cups energy? Thank you. Prince of Wands, yeah, um, taking action. He will be moving forward. He's taking action here. This is about his ability to um, um, travel as well. I don't know if he's talked to you about travel, but travel is also on the cards here. This is card of Sagittarius. Um, he might be taking a trip somewhere soon. Do you know about this? But he is taking action. He doesn't want to be fenced in right now. Um, this is also another message you need to know. Prince of Wands energy is Sagittarian energy. Sagittarian energy is like freedom. It's like if you love someone, you'll set them free. He'll come back to you, okay? Because what, is he, what he's experiencing right now is a healing and he needs room to breathe and room to kind of process everything and room to kind of create some separation with his ex and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, but he might end up taking a trip somewhere. But if he does take this trip and if it hasn't come up just yet, maybe it's coming up and it just hasn't arrived yet. It's manifesting itself at the moment because there's Sagittarian energy here, here and here. It's like three cards of Sagittarius. Sagittarius is like, I need space. I need room to move. Don't fence me in. Okay. So my advice with you for this reading is the Prince of Cups is here. He wants to offer you this cup of love, but he's gonna you're going to need to set him free before he comes back home. Does that make sense? So it's like a wild horse. You let them go and they go for a run. And then when, he, when they get tired out and they need to come home to rest and need to eat and need to, you know, recover and need that hug, need that companionship, he will return to you. But you need to set him free first. That's what I'm seeing in the reading. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, and it did, and you got something out of this because that's sort of what I'm seeing here at the moment. Uh, but hang in there because it's looking really positive. But it's just like I'm not giving you a final answer here because it's not like it hasn't been finalized yet. But he just just sort of needs to, um, and he comes back on the seventh of the month, as in the seventh of December. Because this is all Sagittarian energy. Um, I'm not sure what the seventh of the month means, but yeah, keep doing what you're doing. I think what you're doing right now is great. And I think what you're doing now is, you know, you're hanging in there, you're being the trooper. Um, but he is going through some pain and you just got to be patient because this is temperance as well. You've got two temperance cards. It's like, um, Oh, okay. Well, I'm not talking about what happened last year. I'm talking about um, coming up. Like this is now. This is current energy. I don't talk about like, what happened last year. This is what's happening in coming up. But if he look, if he doesn't go traveling, he's definitely taking action. He's definitely taking action here because this is a new pathway. Cup, um, princes are always about pathways. So he's creating a new pathway um, for new passion in his life new adventure, and he's also creating a new pathway here in terms of a cup of love. He's wearing his heart on his sleeve. He is going to be coming towards you, but you just got to be, yeah, patient in the situation. So, guys, that's it. I'm calling it. I hope you had a great afternoon, uh, evening, where, wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm going to get myself some lunch now. I've got an, a, a client at 1 o'clock, so I do have to prepare for that as well. Um, December readings are going to be coming up soon. I'm going to be recording those as well um, because it's already halfway through November and I don't want to leave it till the end of the month because there's lots going on. So take a make sure that you subscribe, re, hit that notification bell as well um, and look out for those November readings. Again, check out all the descriptions below. If you are interested in learning tarot and you are one of my beautiful uh, members here in the community, um, I'm prepared to um, offer you a, a discount on the Academy. So if you are looking at uh, joining the Academy, um, send me an email and let me know who you are in the chat and I will privately give you some access to some pretty hefty discounts um, because I really appreciate you guys supporting me um, and I really appreciate you all for being here. So um, have a beautiful weekend. Keep in touch. Um, and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family as well. Let, me, let people know that I'm out here. So take care, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye, lovelies.